I thought today I would take a little bit of time and just talk about some of my personal spiritual path, like how I ended up doing mantras and studying symbolic art and religion. And also, I spent 10 years living in spiritual communities and how I've sort of made decisions through my life that have led me to sitting here in my basement in uh, Bozeman, Montana, uh, chanting uh, and talking, talking with you. So one situation which obviously was key in my life would have been my first marriage and I was making decisions um, on a whole different set of what would you call it not requirements but um, a whole different way and at that point I was living with my grandparents I was in college I was going to a community college or a branch of the University of New Mexico that was close by we were living in Los Alamos my grandfather was a machinist who worked for the Los Alamos National Lab he worked on satellite stuff he didn't work on the bomb although that is where the atomic bomb was developed so an interesting little town and I had read that if you had a problem that you could pray to be shown in a dream the solution to your problem so I prayed and in a dream I was walking down a hill in that little town and I saw someone playing tennis. As I turned this person called out, hey you want to play some tennis? Well I love tennis um, and when I looked at him I knew I'm gonna marry this man. I also saw somebody running down a hill right next to the tennis court who was wearing a, wearing a t-shirt with the name of an author, a New Age author that I had just been reading, and I thought that was really notable as well. So that comes into the story later. At any rate, sure enough, a few days later, I am walking down the hill, and I see a man playing tennis, and he calls out to me, do you want to play tennis? It's the man from my dream. You know, he's blonde, he has glasses. My current husband, so I'm married for the second time now, he is blonde with glasses, and he says that I just mistook <laughs> this man for him. But actually, it was a completely different person. So at any rate, um, I did play tennis with this man, started seeing this man, and I was very young, and because I had seen this man in a dream, and I knew in the dream I'm going to marry this man, I didn't ask a lot of questions, you know? I didn't take the time to get to know him. Uh, we met in March. We got married in June. My family had never met him, not even my grandparents that I lived with met him. I was just one of those people that if I thought that this was something that God had shown me, then I was going to do it. No questions asked. So note to self, even if you believe that you are inspired um, by a spiritual principle, by your God, it's still good to ask questions because we're here in a practical world and you're going to have to live with that person if you decide to marry them. So, so we did get married and um, I knew within days that I had made a big mistake. Now I'm not saying a big mistake in like the larger realm of life because there's always good that comes out of things and it may have been absolutely necessary. You know, they say if you if you have a karmic situation with someone where they've done something to serve you in another life, I do believe in reincarnation. So if that is true um, and you owe them a debt in some way, then you can balance that. So we were married in June and then I left in December uh, and there were a lot of reasons for that. So we got married, and within a few days, I realized that he and I had very, very different values. He had been uh, a dealer. He had been a, a weed dealer and grower in southern New Mexico, and this was decades before it was legal. I just am not a person who really uh, experimented with or valued drugs, alcohol. It's just, it's just not my thing. So that was a big difference. Um, also, I discovered that he wasn't completely honest. On a very personal level, fundamentally, I found out months after we were married that he had a sexually transmittable disease, which fortunately I didn't get, but you can imagine how that affected our relationship. There were just, I, just like almost everything you can imagine. You know, I just didn't know the man. I didn't know his past. I didn't know his history. I'm glad he got a chance. Honestly, I felt like he had a chance being married to me to really start over. I was totally into health food. I cooked him really healthy food. I was pursuing different spiritual practices. I was doing a form of, of prayer out loud that's somewhere between uh, speaking and chanting. 
it was called decreeing. So I was doing this practice every day and I was really trying hard, you know, I was trying to improve the world around me in whatever way I could. Everything from, you know, fixing up our, our little place that we lived to helping an elderly neighbor, whatever, you know, I'm not trying to say like, I'm some amazing person. And he wasn't. Clearly, there were wonderful qualities that he had. All I'm saying is that it was a chance for him to live a different life. And, and you know, he could do that or not. So what happened eventually is that we took a little trip across the country. And we ended up in Florida. I went to a spiritual conference in Florida, and he went to a tennis camp. He was a very good tennis player. What was interesting about that is just before he and I met, I was part of a little study group. It was like a, a science of mind, um, you know, positive thinking kind of thing. And I hadn't told the ladies in the group, there's only three of us, that um, I was getting married and I was moving town, so all of a sudden I just didn't show up at the group. So finally I thought I should call and tell them what had happened, because, I mean, this was a whirlwind. This is like, you know, I meet someone, I start seeing him, I get married, um, my parents did come to the wedding, um, my grandparents were there, but it was very, very small. It wasn't, uh, there was no, <laughs> there was no planning, you know, we just went and got married. So I did call to let them know that I had gotten married, I had moved out of town, we had moved to Albuquerque, and what had gone on. And the woman who was leading the group said, well, the last time you came, as soon as you left, I sat down to have some tea, and I suddenly had a vision of you in a lifetime that you had in Florida, and that there was a man who was your son at that time who took care of you, because you were a widow and you needed someone to bring you food and water and and bring you wood for your fire and he took care of you and without his assistance you really wouldn't have survived so i knew that you had met someone that it was him and that that's where you had gone that's what had happened so the interesting thing was that she said that we lived in florida at that time and then when i got to florida after six months of marriage with him, which had been extraordinarily difficult, it was like the cycle was over. And when he called me and said, where should I pick you up? Because he was at a tennis camp. I was at the spiritual conference. And I said, don't, I'm going home. And flew back to my family and never really explained to my family what had happened because I was really, really into the belief at the time, which I still, which I still, uh, admire and practice most of the time that you should only speak of positive things. So I didn't want to say anything negative about him. And I didn't want to say anything negative about the whole experience, even though it was pretty intense. So, uh, so that marriage ended in Florida. And when I got back home, then I kept studying all of the New Age books that I had gotten. And my path went on from there.